change an air filter. <laughs> yes, an air filter on a drive Daytona 1200, 995. Right. We've got to take the fair enough the tank, seat, rest of the side bodywork. Lift the coils out of the way. Shit. Oh, imagine if I'd broken that. Airbox snorkel and stuff. Move the existing airbox back. Remove all four carburetors as one. Put your new airbox on. Put your carbs back in. Airbox stuff back on. Snorkels, whatever. And so that's how much you have to remove <laughs> to change an air filter. The air filter will stay in there now for the next 10 freaking years. Because I'm not going to put that much mileage up on this thing. Note that on each carb, there's a vacuum takeoff point, the cap. And my vacuum for the fuel tap here is off number three carb in there. This one is off number three carb. Bodywork comes off real easy. A couple of bolts. One here and here, either side. Here and here. And the rest are just push. Lugs that come out. Oh, not that one. That come out very easy. There's, uh, you can separate the two halves and take the tailpiece off, but there's no need to. There's enough flex. There's enough flex to get this off. And these are just pieces that sit there. That's a lot of work for an air filter, Jesus. Pulling out the choke cable seems reasonably easy. Uh, was that the choke cable? Yes, it was. So, oh, that's a bit like just an old bicycle thing. That's an easy one to get out. So that choke cable is routed from the left-hand side. Get up there. Through here. So he's out the way now. I'm going to have to cable tie those coils up because they're just getting in the bloody way. Right. Throttle cable through this metal elbow. It's a bit more of a pain to remove. Ah. I might try and remove it once I get the carbs out. As long as I can move the cable. Yes, I can. So I'll try and remove the carbs first. I'll leave the cable on. Yeah, I haven't got enough slack in this throttle cable to get the carbs fully out. So I might get them partially out and then see about disconnecting the throttle cable. Otherwise it's gonna be a bit tight, I think. What I've done is uh, remove one of the airbox inlet rubbers. And I noticed it was actually kinked there. So that wasn't sitting in properly. Notice the design here, there's a slight inlet at the top. That matches the carb there. These have to come off anyway, because they're going on the new airbox, but fuck me. Excuse my French. They're not in great shape. Jeez, these were butchered on. So, 
I think they're for the bin. Bugger. Have to wait for them to get them in. Jeez, these are the rubbers. The trash, they're all over the place. So this is the state so far. I've got the inlet rubbers off. They're trash. They're absolute trash. It's no wonder they weren't, that airbox wasn't sitting right. Uh, so I've got everything off the car except the throttle cable, which I can't get to. So I just need to pull this set of carbs off the head, or off the inlet side. Uh, it's been there a while, they're kind of stuck. I'll get there, but I've got a feeling I'm gonna trash these inlet rubbers too. So I might be in for another bill for more rubber. Damn. Success, they came out. So that's off. The inlet rubbers don't look too bad, actually. I'll take them off, clean it up, but I don't think I'll replace them, unless they're incredibly cheap. But I think they're okay to stay on. So the last thing to get this airbox off is a breather. Yeah, crankcase breather. Up to the inside of the airbox. That's just a clip. That'll come off easy enough. So come on, crank his breather off. Airbox out. Another breather. Oh yeah, that's the breather I got the new thing for. Well, the world's most complicated air filter removal system ever. Christ almighty, look at the shit in that. That's why it's been replaced. Right, since I need new airbox inlet rubbers, I'm gonna leave all the cabling on the carbs as is and all the pipe work, because it might take me a week to get them in, just so I don't forget where anything is. So I'll leave it open and wait for the parts. A few other bits and bobs while I'm here. New footrest rubbers. Yeah. Great. So we're gonna replace this start solenoid because we're all the way here. There's the replacement. Easy enough to get to. All right, that's a new start solenoid fitted. Just sits in that rubber holder. This bracket slides back and comes up, complete with the uh, preload adjuster. So uh, it's easy to get to the start solenoid. You just pull it back and up. Once these bolts are off, obviously. So back and up. Yeah. And just slide it back down. Here. Just leaves me to put my relay back on. Grand. I couldn't get that very bottom fairing nut undone, right down the bottom there. So I've split the fairing and just holding it up with a cable tie. It's given me enough access to, access to get the uh, carbs out, so that's grand. Uh, when I first got this bike, I broke the indicator rubber here. And Triumph's replacement are slightly different indicators, which I want to keep the old fashioned ones. So I've managed to pick up an indicator rubber from Sprint. So, there to go. <laughs> In my pocket all the time. So now, fix up the old front indicators, get the originals back on, instead of those, ah, they're not too bad looking, but they're not great either, they don't match the back. Right, jumbo mix, that's the old rubber, replacements. <laughs> 
with Meccano set. Easy done though. This is what happens to these. They just, they get knocked and banged. That's gone all brittle. There we are, two refurbished indicators, fresh rubbers. Notice the little holes in the bottom. They're drain holes. So that is the left hand side. Yeah, and the right. Actually, no, left front, right front. I'm doing the front ones. Cheap fix. There we are, original indicator back on. Yeah, looks much better. Connection's just up by the clocks. It's an easy push fit. You just thread the cable through. So I'm just replacing one of the fuel hoses here. Well, I'm gonna replace them all. But when you do, cut the old one off. And just in here, there's a little gauze. Just need to clean that out before you pop it back in and put the new rubber in. So while this is all out, I just replace the fuel lines. One left, one right. And with that kit comes the vacuum pipe. I haven't put that on yet, but I'll do that. So I'm just waiting for new rubbers now then. So that'll be another four or five days. New coils ready to go. Uh, Got to check my old toolbox at home and find a plug spanner that deep. I'm hoping it won't be hard to find if I haven't got one. Next up, choke and throttle cable. Should be easy enough. Let's see. Positioning of the choke cable. So let's just loosen a couple of those off. That's the old choke cable removed. Just replacing the throttle and choke cable because I don't want some silly little 20 euro cable to leave me stranded. So that's the new one in. That was a five minute job. Need a couple of pair of hands to clip that in there but it was easy enough in the end. Routed back through here. And it'll easy go on the carbs. Once I get that airbox on. No, there's an adjuster under here, a little lock nut and adjuster to change the length of the outer sheath. I won't be able to set that until I connect it to the choke and watch the operation of it. But that'll be a two minute job, easy done. So I'm replacing the throttle cable as well. So I have the adjuster, adjuster out. It's quite a strong spring on the uh, cam in there. So holding up is getting to be a bit of a pain in the ass, just to try and get the, uh, get the equivalent of that off the bottom. So I'll have another go. So I have my new throttle cable routed to mimic the other one all the way up here. So I've left the old one in place and I've routed the new one while the old one's in place. So I match exactly where it goes so I don't make a mistake and get it kinked or misrooted. That was really difficult to get uh, that nipple off at the end. You're kind of doing it a bit blind. You have to kind of do it from the front, this side. So that's the throttle cable replaced. It was fairly easy. Here's my old one. Two screws, comes apart. You can't get it wrong. It's, it's easy to see where the rooting is. Now, I've got a lot of uh, play. Interestingly, I had no play on the throttle cable before I made the change, and I should have some, obviously. Um, I'm okay down that end. Now, I uh, adjusted that top adjuster quite a fair, fair bit, and I've still got a bit too much play there. So, while it's all open, what I'll do is I'll take some more of the slack out of this end, move this back in, take some of the slack out of the carb end, and that'll give me my uh, adjustment at the top there for later. Right, that's the throttle cable done. 
bit of slack on the throttle. And I've still got all my adjustment up the top there. So if it beds in or stretches a bit, I can adjust it easily up there without going back down here. So that's all done. Just waiting for my car rubbers now. And we can finish the job. Right, I might as well change the spark plugs while I'm here. So four new spark plugs. Spark plug tool, 18 mil across the flats. It's a 12 mil spark plug. It don't fit. I kind of knew that. Uh, so I have to get a slim long tool from somewhere. Uh, so that's holded. It seems churlish not to do the valve, or at least check the valve clearances while I'm here. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the valve clearances, or check them at least. I haven't got the special tool for actually adjusting them, but while I'm here, I might as well check them. So I've got my new carb rubbers, just arrived today, or new clips. Just one thing to note, these are from Sprint, these ones. Uh, there's a bracing piece of, uh, Metal inside the old rubbers. You need to take that out and reuse that in here. It just helps keep the shape of the rubber. So it comes out easy enough. So now I can put my airbox back on my carbs. Now I'm gonna put the tiniest, tiniest bit of grease on there. Maybe even a bit of Vaseline, just to get those on and fit them nicely it's got to fit in this groove here this one here so the tiniest bit just to help me ease them on because whoever put them on before obviously forced them in dry and they got them all kinked and all sorts right what i found it's easier to get these on without the uh, ring on the inside that keeps the shape just gives you a bit more uh, room to squeeze them around it's really, really easy to think you have them on and it looks clean around here, but the lip isn't right around the back. So start from the inside ones and run your finger all the way around and you'll find you can get the lip all the way around and make sure you've got this seated properly. That's what the last person didn't do. And I'm sure there are all sorts of air leaks, but I can feel all pretty much all, yeah, all the way around now and it's easy to pull that lip out from the back as well. And that sits really nicely. And then you can stick your ring back in, your steel ring, to keep the shape. So that's the way to do that. So I've got to put these other four in. So I'll take this brace out, because it was hampering me getting them in. And I did put a, the tiniest of tiniest of smears of uh, grease to be able to get them in all the way around this lip. But for the others, I'll just use a mixture of uh, a little bit of soapy, uh, soapy water uh, to get that lip in all the way around. Because it is pretty difficult, not difficult, but it, it's a little bit quirky to get it really sitting properly. So I do that now. this inner lip here yeah let's see what we can do this tab here goes on here Now you can get that lip all the way in, all the way round, and you think, oh yeah, grand, that's it, it's all done. But it's actually way off on the inside. You have to go round on the inside and go all the way round with your finger, which is going to be a bit tricky that side, but uh, we'll get there. Right, this bit's a bit boring, so I won't bother. Then, not forgetting, when that's all in, 
seated nicely. Put my ring back in. Which just keeps its shape, retains its shape. Not too hard, just needs pushing into place. And then just manipulating about a bit to make sure that ring is actually in the groove nicely. Just manipulate the rubber a bit until it's obviously flush. Cool. Perfect, perfect.